America needs an American-made hunt line. We're gonna do it without compromise and we're gonna do it so right, it's undeniable. You can't question it. Yeah, so we're heading over to the Wilton R&D facility. We've got a new pant coming out. Uh, it's gonna be the introduction to our new workwear line, the built line. So we're having to rework the entire factory at apparel. And so we're injecting new processes, so we need new tools. We're gonna find a rivet press. I'm either gonna find a rivet press that works or I'm gonna find a rivet press that we can rebuild. Today's gonna be a little bit of a mad dash. We want these in the line next week. New truck problems. Hey, we're looking for a rivet press. This is an old kick press. This does what I want it to do. And this maybe does what I want it to do, but probably not. So, okay, on to apparel. Uh, that's a bummer. I think what we're gonna end up having to do is we're probably gonna have to prototype with a kick press. This, this is frustrating, but it's okay. My name is Dennis Eiler. I'm a production and process manager here at Origin. So this week we're working on getting the built fill pan into the line. Right now I'm trying to get a rivet machine set up so we can actually get the tack time down. And after this built pan, we got the hunt line coming. America needs an American made hunt line. And when you've got these other companies in the hunt world that have great designs, cool innovations, and then they just offshore it all, they abandon the American worker. They abandon the American hunter. These folks need another option. Chaco needs another option. Kit needs another option. We're gonna do it without compromise and we're gonna do it so right, it's undeniable. You can't question it. So everywhere that we had a rivet specced on that pant, um, Jen wants it to be a bar tack. Amanda approved that. My concern with that is one, bar tacks are incredibly strong. They're super structural. It's, it's not a big deal from a construction standpoint. Aesthetically, it's hard to sell that as this iconic denim work pant without yeah. that rivet. It's, it's an aesthetic you feature. To, you can't sell a work pant without having a rivet. No, 100%. Part of the concern is too, that second rivet press does not exist. We do not have another way to inject a rivet press into the line. We ordered a new one. From Scoville? I think it's three, six months out. Yeah, we, we have to rivet that. Agreed. Okay, I'll, I'll find a way to get a press over there. We're having a hard time finding out whether or not the tool that we need is even in existence at this point. But yeah, one way or the other, this thing starts getting made on Wednesday. Hey man, what you doing? I'm over at Wilton. Um, we're gonna, Bill found us a kick press that's actually gonna work. We sent Bill, who's our uh, sewing machine mechanic over here. What we were trying to avoid was having to use one of these antique kick presses. They're great pieces of equipment, but for the way we're manufacturing and the speed with which we're scaling, they just don't meet the need as, as effectively as we'd like. So we're gonna make one of these work in the meantime. We're gonna see if we can't get a pneumatic press or something a little more modern here. But for now, we're taking this kick press over to the factory and we're just gonna inject it right into the line. So figuring out a way to make it work. You guys probably don't know what Joe's doing right now in his metal shop. Let me take you back. So we managed to find that antique kick press over at Wilton that you saw us digging out of the archive. It's really a step back in terms of technology compared to what we're using in the rest of the factory. Brought it over here. I was holding onto the sides of this thing just to create enough leverage. One of our stitchers, one of the sewing machine operators that we were gonna use to teach this process to, put it in her area. She saw me using it. She wasn't able to hold it the same way. It was sliding all over the floor. She couldn't do it. Britt looks over, she tells me, put handles on it. Like, can we fabricate a handle? And I was like, let's get Joe involved. All right, what we're doing is making two handles for a uh riveting press for these rivets on the jeans and what I'm going to do with this is this is the other one I'm going to tap it drill it tap it half inch so I can bolt it on top so I can have two to hold on to it while they're operating the press
Boom. Boom. How you like that? Dax has been traveling around a lot, meeting with different suppliers and different companies. Um, we're looking at different fabrics, uh, what they can do, what they can do, produce for us, all American made. My name is Dax Hall. I'm the design director for the apparel division of Origin USA. I medically retired from the United States Navy in 2003 after 10 and a half years of service. I started applying the knowledge that I learned in the Navy to, uh, to designing apparel in the apparel industry. Since that time, I've worked for uh, brands like Carhartt, Harley-Davidson Moda Clothes, Hart Schaffner & Marks, which is one of the oldest suiting companies in the United States. I'm super fortunate to be here at Origin doing something that I enjoy, something I love, something that's my true passion. The team here is outstanding. We're developing some new product lines here, and so I'm just really happy to be part of this whole team. But yeah, so I have everything pretty well organized. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you guys got this all figured out. Holy cow. Yeah, trying to. I mean, little by little. I mean, this is this is a huge undertaking in itself right here. Yeah, it certainly is. Yeah, we're um like the North Carolina factory's <sighs> got to shut down some some of their production lines right now to gear up to get all this stuff, you know. Really? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I think we're really starting to get some some uh some stuff accomplished here. We we got all our fabrics sourced for um the hunt program. <sighs> Um, so we're looking pretty good for this uh, 20, uh, 2022 fall holiday launch. Why the f is that needle bar slipping? That should not slip. I tightened this thing down so much it was crazy. It's breaking needles, which obviously should not be happening. But whatever it does, it's hitting something and it shatters the needles. So ultimately this slows down the whole line. We have to have this whole line running smoothly before we can hope to be successful with a new product launch. Got the double needle machine back up and running. So this is in the same cell as the kick press. So now we can move on to actually training on the kick press. Get these girls to a point where we can start working on the field pant and start building the release. Mm -hmm. 